Hello, this is Becca from Willow Hill Designs. Welcome to my channel and hope everyone is doing well. Uh, today I am showing my interpretation for the prompts in Roxy's Journal of Stitchery down the garden path. And the prompts were, um, let's see, flower garden or your favorite flower, bird bath or bird house. And so the last time that I did a video, I showed where I had added this tree to the join. I My roll ended here, and so I had to join on a piece of fabric, and I showed where I joined this tree. So from here down is the new part of the, um, the roll. And I'm thinking I may not even need all of this. I may have to, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure I'll have to cut some of this off. But, um, so let's see. I'll show what I've done here. And I'll give a little close-up. Let's see. Let me just use this. I'll show a little close-up of what I've done for the flower garden. And the birdhouse. And so I guess starting here at the birch tree. Oh, before I go on, um, I've had a few people ask about the quilt that I'm making for my grandson to be born in September, the Noah's Ark quilt. So at the very end, I will show uh, a little bit of that quilt. I'll be making a video on that quilt, but I, I know that there are some quilters who also join into the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. So for those people, I will be showing um, where I am on that quilt. And if you want to um, switch off, that's certainly fine. Move on to the next video. But I, I thought I'd give you a, a little bit of a heads up so that you would know it's at the end and you can move on to the next video. But okay, so um, in the last video, a bird nest, I had showed this little bird nest that I thought had fallen from the upper tree story. And um, as Mrs. Rabbit was coming down the path to join in the picnic over here with Miss Lucy and Miss Daffodil and the other little animals, Dusty, the field mouse, her little boy was following along going to the picnic and he got very tired <laughs> and he saw this um, little bird's nest on the ground and because he hadn't taken his nap he climbed into this bird's nest and he fell asleep so he's very happily taking a nap there and so that was in the last video and I also added this stone wall because I knew I wanted to put my flower garden Rather than favorite flower, I I love all flowers. I, I really love them all. I mean, I do love roses and lilies of the valleys and violet. No, I can't pick. I couldn't pick, so <laughs> I did a flower garden here. And um, so the wall came first, and I thought I'd put the garden here. Before that, I had added some petunias here, um, just sort of falling down onto the ground, and um, I went around those with a, a blanket stitch. And then I also had, um, this. these flowers had sort of a, an olive green center. So I did some olive green French knots on those to accentuate them. And also I felt that they needed brightening up. So I had this crafter's square pen and I um, just added, it's safe for fabric. And I just used that to add some little dots to the centers of these flowers to brighten them up a tiny bit. So, and I had added some greenery underneath those. This leaf I stitched on, uh, just did a running stitch down the center for the vein, and then I did some V stitches um, to look like the little um, serrated edges, cut edges of the leaf. And, um, so beginning over here, I had drew some flowers. Matter of fact, I can still see some of my friction pen here. I have to finish ironing that. 
But for this plant, I used two strands and I did a fly stitch on here with French knots and then added some grasses. I did, I also used two strands on these flowers and uh, did an outline or a stem stitch with Lazy Daisy for leaves. And these are sort of an echinacea type flower. I um, they went to one strand of thread here just because I didn't care for that chunky sort of look and um, did more stems and um, these sort of pyramidal flowers, I'm not quite sure what they are, some sort of an imaginary flower, um, although maybe that does make you think of a hyacinth, sort of, a little tiny bit. And um, another flower here, kind of a feathery flower with a, a part of a star flower on it. And um, these are larger flowers. These were done with lazy daisies and uh, two strands of thread and French knots for the centers. And another feathery kind of a star flower like this one. And then these little flowers, not quite sure what these are, but these are just stems with straight stitches at the top and French knots again with just different colors sprinkled throughout and a purple one here. And um, this is uh, another fly stitch or feather stitch little plant over here with white um, little white French knots on that one. And then the other little flowers next to it. So that is the flowers in the background. And um, I also added a bit to this flower with um, stitching around the outside and some straight stitches, adding some more French knots of another color in here. I added a little bird up here because this is his birdhouse. And um, I just sketched this on. This again is um, an outline stitch, which really works well for um, making stems and trees and branches. And um, same thing here. This is one strand of thread for the little bird house and the bird roof. And uh, for the hole for the center where the bird goes in, I just did a messy French knot. And then I tacked it down from the edges out at four points, just came from the outside into the center, outside into the center, just to keep it so it would hold its shape a little bit. And then I just drew a vine wrapping around this little bird house and put some white kind of messy French knots on that. I also added this little squirrel, Chatterer, the red squirrel, who is keeping an eye on the baby bunny over here, but also he's bringing his share to the picnic oh, back here. So he's bringing, it looks like maybe a filbert, hazelnut, or maybe an acorn. He's bringing something that he would enjoy. And then I decided to add um, this flower that was kind of bending this giant flower, it seems, in this garden that sprung up and is sort of hanging over this little nest and providing shade for this bunny. And this fabric, um, these are actually wings, fairies' wings. Um, let me see if I have a piece of that here in just a second. This is the fabric that I used for the flower petals. And these are, I used the fairy wings here. Uh, they made me think of petals on a flower. And then I just sort of accentuated that a little bit with um, embroidery floss, a little darkening the bottom, sort of like a shadow under there and, and the edges. This stem is done. This is all the thread on here is DMC floss. And uh, this was the stem stitch on here. These are stitched on with invisible stitch. This is also stitched on with invisible stitch. And, um, and then I just went down the centers of those leaves with um, a little 
running st stitch with machine sewing thread, 50 weight. Um, not sure if you can really see that, but down the center there is a, a little vein going down the center. And then just some little lines around the edges to look like the little um, serrations in the leaf. And so that is the flower that I've added there. And let's see, is there anything else? I don't think so. The little squirrel, the petunias. Uh, this leaf, I did some little kind of V stitches on the edges here in a darker um, embroidery floss. Again, to give that sort of a cut edge. I know there's leaves with smooth edges and then there's leaves that have the little cut, cut edges. I can't remember the names. I know there are names for the different types of leaves. Um, so I think that is it. So I think there's two more prompts left, so I don't know if I'll be able to squeeze them in anywhere in my role, my uh, role, or if they'll have to be added after this flower here. And I do have, uh, let's see, how many inches do I have here? I have about 13 and a half inches left beyond this flower. So I doubt that I will need it all, but who knows what the next two prompts are. And I thought I would quickly show also my spool that I have put together. Um, this was the, the roll, the core to a plastic wrap roll, Reynolds plastic wrap roll. And I um, distressed the edges of these wooden circles. This is a two and a half, I think, and this is a three inch circle. I knew I would be needing something wider as our roll would be, was growing. And did the same thing on the bottom and distressed the edges. So that is my roll. Hopefully this will be sturdy and this will stay. I used a clear tacky glue on here to glue this together. And my, my little roll will wrap around um, let me see, from this end, and then it will, it will unroll this way. And as you go down, you will look at the story. So hopefully, um, I'm guessing because I covered my, the center of my spool, with fabric, I'm thinking I'll probably just glue the end of my little roll to this fabric on my spool. So that my spool is all set after the next two prompts that will be ready. And I'll just give you a, a quick close up again of from the beginning. I was asked by someone if this was a um, pre-printed panel that you buy. And no, I just wanted to explain again to Jasmine that this is not a pre-printed panel. This is just our take on this, whether you do a roll or you do a wall hanging or you do a book. Um, this is nothing pre-printed. You just lay it out exactly the way you would like to do it and add whatever elements and stitching that you would like to. So, um, that's what this is. So I'll just quickly go from the beginning. Down, down the garden path. Which is actually much longer than I anticipated. I thought maybe 36 inches. And um, it's probably more like 44. I don't know. I haven't measured it, but um, there's my little birdhouse with the vine and the little squirrel that is joining the party and the flower garden and the baby bunny asleep. And so that is the end of my roll so far. 
And um, so now if you would like to um, switch off to another video to look at, that's perfectly fine. I will show um, a little bit of the Noah's Ark quilt that I'm making for my future grandson. <laughs> and um, it's still still being worked on. It's not finished. Let's see, where is it? And I will be making up a, a video on this just to show some of the methods that I used. Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to have to raise my camera, really. So if you'll close your eyes for a minute so that you don't get so that you don't get dizzy or seasick, I'll just bring it up a tiny bit because this is a larger image and um this is it so far there's a sky that is a color washed sky with two and a half inch squares finishing at two inches and um the rainbow and some of the animals that are here on the ark the, the giraffes and hippos and here is noah there's a tree over here, and there's a tree in progress here that I haven't stitched down yet. So um, according to what they think, the Ark landed on Mount Ararat. So I am envisioning that when the waters receded that there were trees and grasses and that's kind of my vision. So we have camels and ostriches and tiger, let's see, lions, and of course our doves and bunnies. Lots of animals on here, kangaroos, all coming two by two. I left alligators out, I didn't want them out there. I thought they were kind of, poor alligators. I was thinking they were kind of gross no offense to alligators or alligator lovers. <laughs> some sheep, some tigers, llamas, of course. I love llamas. Some rhinos and pandas. And I have, let's see, I have some gorillas. I have some zebras. And um, something else. Another pair. Let's see what I've got. Gorillas. And let's see. Oh, elephants. Yes. So there'll be some gorillas down here and elephants and zebras. And I just um, created the background, the greenery for the background and the sky and then added the arc to that. And there'll be two borders surrounding this as well. So that is my little arc wall hanging for our new baby that is coming on his way. And here is my latest finish for the most recent prompts. So again, thank you very much for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Another little close up. Okay, bye for now. Wishing you many blessings.